Hey YouTube, Cameron here. In this video I'll be showing you all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the past month. I've got 16 things to show you guys, so I better get started. I'm just going to start with the Blu-rays first, work my way down to the DVDs. Other than that, these aren't in any particular order, so... First thing I'm going to show you guys is Scream 4 on Blu-ray. I am a big Scream fan, and I absolutely love this movie to death. Um, no pun intended. Um, this is, this was a great movie. I was really, really happy with it. Um, so happy they came back and made a new one, and I cannot wait till Scream 5 comes out. Fortunately, I didn't get to see this in theaters, um, because I didn't have my license at the time, and no one would take me to go see it. You have the Blu-ray and the DVD. Uh, I really wanted to see it in theaters, uh, but I had to wait for this to come out. Which was fine, and it was worth the wait. And I'm really, really happy with this. Picture quality is five stars. Audio, almost five stars. Really, really great picture quality and audio. Definitely recommend that you see this movie if you're a Scream fan. So, got that. Next one I picked up is another Wes Craven movie, Nightmare on Elm Street. Been meaning to pick this up for a while. And uh, it was $10 at Walmart on Blu-ray, so I thought might as well go ahead and pick it up. Um, again, great picture quality. Pretty good audio. Um, but I'm really, really happy with this because I've never had a chance to actually own this thing before. Um, I've just seen it on TV and, and, uh, you know, rentals, but I've never actually got a chance to have it for myself. So I'm really, really happy I finally got this thing. Got Freddy Krueger on the disc there. But, um, classic movie. Can't go wrong with Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, the main reason why I bought that was to prepare for this one right here, A Nightmare on Elm Street 2 and 3 double feature, which has Freddy's Revenge and Dream Warriors. Uh, a lot of people were disappointed about this release, at the fact that they crammed both movies onto one disc. I don't think that affected the picture quality or audio at all. Um, picture quality was pretty good on this. It was decent. Uh, it, it's just to be expected considering they're sequels, really low budget sequels, but um, sound wasn't too good, but I'm happy with this overall. Um, really looking forward to them releasing 4 and 5 and a double feature if they do. Uh, you also have some small special features on here, nothing really worthwhile, but you know, good enough. So, there's that. Next I'll show you all the Disney Blu-rays I've got. Um, here I have Dumbo, 70th Anniversary Edition on Blu-ray. You can't go wrong with these Disney Blu-rays at all. They always do a great job with their classics. Except for Fox and the Hound. They really didn't do a good job with that. That was oops, that was disappointing. But, um, yeah, this looks fantastic on Blu-ray. I mean, it's a 70-year-old movie, and it looks like it was made yesterday. Um, sounds pretty good, too. But here you have Blu-ray... You know, digital, uh, or the uh, code for Disney Rewards, some ads here, and you have the DVD as well. But, uh, yeah, looks great on Blu-ray, sounds great, uh, really happy to have this, and of course it's a classic movie. Uh, okay, put this aside here. The next Disney Blu-ray I picked up was The Lion King 3D. This has... Uh, Blu-ray 3D, regular Blu-ray, DVD, and digital copy. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to watch this just yet, because I have a ton of things that I'm watching right now. Uh, not to mention all the shows that are coming on TV and all that. But, um, you know, I have no doubt that this looks great. I've seen reviews of it, and of course, it looks fantastic. Um, I'm really looking forward to popping this in, though, as this was always one of my favorite Disney movies. And to get to see this on Blu-ray would be like seeing it for the first time. Which is really great. You're probably wondering where the discs are. I just kept the digital copy and the ads in here. Because I picked up this baby right here. Uh, this was a Best Buy exclusive. You got this free with this. Uh, first you had to go into Best Buy and put a 750 deposit down on this. Then when this movie came out, you take the receipt in. And they take the 750 you paid for this off of the movie, um, but yeah, this is this is amazing right here. Great case, um, you know, and it ends up being completely free by the time you're done. I just put um, 
uh, Blu-ray 3D, regular Blu-ray, and the DVD in here. Um, and then behind here you have the art. And then I put this Blu-ray guide in here too. You have the art in there. You have, yeah. It's really, really nice. Uh, uh, Best Buy's been doing these a lot lately, and I'm really happy they are because they're excellent. Um, then I also picked up, let me move this out of the way, picked up Cars 2. This is the same uh, collectible case as the other one. You do the same thing, you spend $7.50, then you take the receipt in when the movie comes out. You end up getting this for free. These aren't really steel books, they're something else. I forget what they're called, but I don't have the movie yet. I just have the case, and then when the movie comes out, I'll go get it. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's a little scratchy, scratchy today. <clears throat> uh, again, the same case. Only this one's for Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. And then when that movie comes out, I'll take the receipt in, get the 750 taken off, and this will end up being free. Really nice on the back here. Map. And really nice artwork on the inside. Yeah, really like that. Okay, um, this one I got a while ago. This is the Scarface Limited Edition Steelbook. Uh, really, really nice. Really, really happy with this. The back is excellent. Um, yeah, I'm sure everyone's seen reviews of this on YouTube. But you get these uh, art cards right here, which I haven't opened. Uh, digital copy. You got the back artwork here. You have Scarface on Blu-ray. And then you have the original Scarface from the 1930s on DVD. And the back artwork there is really nice. Um, but yeah, really, the transfer was good. A lot of people were saying, talking about how it wasn't too good. It was alright, but uh, I think overall it was, it was just fine. No problem at all. Um... And I thought the original movie was really good, too. It was nice to see Boris Karloff in a different role, you know, without all the Frankenstein makeup on. Um, but yeah, that's all the Blu-rays I've got. And now on to the DVDs. Speaking of Boris Karloff, I picked up Frankenstein, 75th Anniversary Edition on DVD. Uh, really, really nice edition here. Uh, I got this for $7.50 at Walmart. I had it on sale. Which is a really great deal. The back there is excellent. Um, here's just something to protect the disc. Uh, you have the movie, and then here are all the special features. With some really great features on here. And you got the back artwork. Really nice. Um, transfer on this is really great as well, though I am hoping they will release a Blu ray of this at some point. Because um, it could still use a you know, another, uh, another restoration yeah, in the back there. Uh, but, yep, really, really good DVD, and I'm happy with it until the Blu-ray comes out. I also picked up, uh, Samuel Z. Uh, Arkoff Collection, called Classics. This has How to Kill a Monster and The Blood of Dracula, and I also picked up this one right here, which has The Day the World Ended and The She-Creature. These were $4.50 at Kmart, actually, in their Halloween section. Um, I've watched How to Make a Monster, and it was it was alright. You know, it's good, cheesy fun. Um, but I haven't watched the others yet. I'm looking forward to watching those for Halloween. But yeah, yeah really, really good deal. I mean, $10 and you get four good, cheesy movies. So, yeah, that was a good deal. Um, next up I got Simpsons Treehouse of Horror. I've never seen, uh, Simpsons Treehouse of Horror, any of the episodes ever. So I was really looking forward to watching this, and I was a little disappointed. At least I was disappointed with the episodes they chose. Because none of the episodes were really that Halloween-like. I was hoping for some more, you know, more monsters, more Halloween-like episodes. Um, I'm not sure if the other episodes that are in the series are more Halloweeny, Halloweeny. Uh, um, the uh, uh, four episodes that they chose here, which is five, six, seven, and twelve, um, 
Now, no, the episodes are funny and everything, but I just wish they were a little bit more Halloween-like. You have the apple on the disc there. It's pretty cool. But, um, I don't know. I'll have to watch some of the other episodes, see if they're on YouTube, and I don't know, see if they're any better. Next one I picked up is Cameron's Closet. The main reason why I picked this up is because my name is Cameron, and I have a closet. Um, you know, what's better to freak you out than that? Uh, I've, when I, bought, I picked this up, I didn't think it was going to be any good. I really just thought it would be a cheesy 80s movie. Um, didn't really think it was going to be that great. However, I was surprised. This was really, really well done. Um, the ending was a little cheesy. Um, but there were some scenes in this movie that, especially one scene in particular, where I jumped out of my seat. But, um, yeah, this really wasn't that bad of a movie. There were also some very... Stephen King-esque scenes in this that I thought were pretty well done. Uh, but yeah, I was surprised by this. Uh, next one picked up was The I-2. This is the Japanese sequel. Um, well, first there was the Japanese version of the original movie, and then they remade it here in the U.S. This is, The I-2 is uh, the Japanese sequel to the Japanese original, if that makes any sense. I don't know. Um, but this was really good as well. I uh, was really surprised by it because I didn't, I didn't think that uh, Japanese sequels were that good considering I'd seen the sequels to uh, the Ring movies in Japan. Didn't really care for those, but I was really surprised by this. This was a little weird. The storyline was pretty weird, but it worked. And it, you didn't really think of it as being that strange until after you watch it. Then you're like, huh. But I really liked it. I thought it was good. There were some really bizarre scenes in this movie. Um, and the last one I have is The Inner Sanctum Mysteries, the complete movie collection starring Lon Chaney Jr. Um, I haven't got a chance to watch any of these yet. I got this at Half Price Books, brand new for, I think, $10. Um, but yeah, some pretty good, pretty good packaging here, too. You have the two discs here. You got the artwork in the back. All the different posters for the movie. Um, but yeah, I haven't got a chance to watch these yet. And I'm really, really excited to see what they're all about. Lon Chaney Jr. is great. Um, yeah, but that's all I got for the past month. I've been meaning to do this video sooner, but things just kept coming up and couldn't get around to it. But uh, I'll try to do these a bit more often now. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.